Repairing circuit boards has become one of my new favorite things to do in recent months, and I've found myself refurbishing and building quite a lot of different things. In that time though, I've also had to repair a few mistakes, both by others and myself. So what do you do when you break a particular board and it ends up missing a solder pad? Well in today's video I'm going to show you one of several options that you have in this scenario. I'm going to be using my microscope a lot in this video. The repairs I'll be showing can be done without one, but having one makes this process a ton easier. In my last video, I talked about getting a cheap digital microscope for close-up electronics work, so be sure to check that out if you have any questions about what to buy and how much to spend on it. So let's talk about solder pads. As with most of my other videos to date, I've got a Game Boy Color board much like this one here that I'll be working on. Let's take a closer look. The part in question is this area here at location C38. This is where a capacitor is supposed to be installed, specifically a 100 microfarad 4 volt cap. See how the pad on the right is silver with a layer of solder on it? Well, the one to the left of it is supposed to look like that too. However, it seems that whoever was repairing this board before us used a bit too much heat and force, which caused the solder pad to separate from the silk screen and get ripped off. But this board is not a lost cause. The trace leading to where the pad used to be is still there, so we can just solder directly to that. But getting to it will take a little bit of patience and finesse. So for a start, use a sharp craft knife to scratch away the silk screen on top of the trace. Do this very carefully and using light pressure. Be careful not to hook the tip of your knife on the edge of the trace and risk chipping any more of it away from the board. As you can see, more and more shiny copper will be revealed as you gradually work your way down the trace a millimeter at a time. Also make sure that you don't scratch too deep and cause any fractures in the copper itself. Otherwise, that could cause even more of it to break away, leaving you with less to work with. As I work my way down this trace, I decide to check if I now have enough of a contact to solder the positive leg of the capacitor too. I first clean away any debris with some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton swab. After that, I apply some rosin soldering flux to the work area, covering the trace so that it removes any oxidation from its surface so I can solder to it. Then I put some 6040 solder onto this trace to make sure that this is going to work. I use leaded solder for applications like this because lead-free solder requires more heat to melt. This exposed trace is already fragile enough, so I don't want to cause any undue stress to it. Afterwards, I clean away the leftover flux with some more IPA, and then I try to line up the new capacitor to see if it will fit. It does, but just barely. So in that case, I decide to expose a little more of the trace so that I have a bit more room to work with. I do again just as I did before. Use my knife to scrape away the silk screen. Clean away any debris with IPA and a cotton swab. Add some flux and then a bit of solder already on the tip of my iron. And then clean again to make sure it all looks good. I now put down a bit more flux, and then set down the capacitor in the flux to make sure everything fits. Since I've got a bit more room to work with now, I solder the capacitor down to the original pad and the newly exposed trace. When doing this, get in and out as quick as you can so that you don't put extra heat and stress on the contacts. All that's left now is to clean up the area a bit with some IPA and a cotton swab, gently wiping away any flux that's left over. Once the repair is complete, I take a quick measurement across the capacitor, just to make sure everything is kosher. For this specific type of repair, an optional step you can take is to apply a tiny dab of hot glue, joining the side of the capacitor in the PCB. Since we've soldered directly to an exposed trace, it's been my experience that adding some extra support to this area is best for reinforcing the placement of this capacitor. You don't need to put the capacitor in a tomb of glue. All you need is just a small drop on the side, and you're all set. To avoid needing to perform a repair like this, as I've said in my previous videos, use flux. 
Doing so helps remove surface oxidation and promote heat transfer from your soldering iron to your workpiece. Basically, it helps solder melt and join pieces together. Also remember to turn down the heat of your iron. You don't need a lot to melt solder, considering that the melting point for 6040 solder is 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually I keep my temps between 400 and 600 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's just fine, because that's what I'm comfortable with. Just make sure that you practice and find a temperature that you are comfortable soldering at. At any rate, thanks for watching, and I hope that this information helps you with your projects. If you liked this video, hit the like button below, and consider subscribing for more content like this. As always, you all stay awesome, and I'll see you in my next video.